So hey folks and welcome back to the channel and on this video we're actually looking and test riding the Vosges 500 AC, the naked version. It's kind of a commuter bike but uh, stick around, stay tuned and we'll give you a full overview of this bike followed by a test ride and also my view and thoughts on this machine. Okay, so there she is, the Vosges 500 AC, the naked version. This is a 497cc parallel twin that you have in this machine. And also this engine is out of the 500DSX uh, and the DS, the adventure style motorcycle that they do. Um, this bike either comes in the matte grey colour or you can have it in a black version and the price is 5799 and it comes with a two-year parts and labour warranty. The suspension on the bike is non-adjustable upside down KYB forks on the front and you've got a monoshock tucked under the rear as preload adjustment. Tyres on the bike, uh, it comes with Angel GTs from Pirelli, a 120 on the front and then you've got a 160 tyre on the rear. The discs uh, on the front you've got a 298 millimeter disc with a Nissan two-pot caliper. The bike comes with cast alloy wheels and also one thing I do like about this is that it has the right angled tyre valves on which a lot of more expensive bikes don't come with. On the rear you've got a 240 millimeter and also you've got a Nissan single pot caliper and also ABS front and rear. The engine is water-cooled, you've got a little rad just up the front there, it comes with a six-speed gearbox. Uh, the engine has 46.3 brake horsepower and the same torque as the DSX, which I'll uh, put on the screen just now. Um, seat height seems to be about 780 mil to 800 millimeter, so okay for shorter riders. Uh, I think this bike's really aimed at a commuter motorcycle and I'll go through my reasons why when we have a test ride of the bike. The competition on the market, you've got the Honda CB500F which is priced at 5749 which is £50 cheaper. So the question is, is it better with it being £50 dearer than the Honda CB500F? On the front you've got all LED headlights and indicators and on the rear you've got a integrated tail light and the indicators are down on the splash guard where the number plate is. Comes with a nice funky exhaust, doesn't look too bad and also I notice you've got nice rubber pads on the foot pegs just here for the rider and you've got pillion foot pegs just on the back there. I would say the bike itself seems quite short geared compared to the Honda so that might be a downside and I found myself while coming up the motorway just now being quite short geared that the bike was revving quite highly so I would uh, put this bike as a town bike a small country lane bike I wouldn't really put it as a long distance bike with it being so short geared now I'm not sure what literage the fuel tank is it doesn't actually state that on the website um, but I would put it at around 16 liters uh, gas mileage is probably pretty good on this bike and also at the front just here you see you've got a uh, digital nice TFT screen which is I would imagine about four inch similar to the DSX the adventure bike that we recently tested one of the things that I do like about this is it's really clear um, as it should be with it being a Chinese bike. Electronics are one of their, uh, their main things, aren't they? But one of the things that I find uh, interesting is it's also got tire pressure monitor on the, uh, the dash as well, which I think some of the more expensive bikes don't have and I think they should have. Switch gear, uh, it's pretty tactile and pretty straightforward to use. You've got a menu button here and an enter. Um, you can also, on this bike, switch it into uh, Bluetooth mode, so you can actually connect your phone. I'm not sure how to do that, but you can get Bluetooth, I would imagine, turn-by-turn -turn navigation and access to phone books and, and if somebody's trying to text you or call you. Um, so that's available either for Android or for an Apple phone. Other stuff on the bike, very basic, uh, mirrors, 
switch gear on this side. Like I say, non-adjustable forks. And on the rear of the bike, you've got passenger grab rails. So if you want to take a pillion around town, uh, you've got that. I think this bike would be a very good starter bike for a, uh, an A2 license, which is where it's aimed at. In comparison to the Honda, they're both similarly priced, give or take 50 pounds. Um, what I do notice is some of the fasteners are starting to show signs of wear and tear, and it is a brand new bike. And also on the back here, on the nuts for adjusting the, uh, the rear wheel, you've got a bit of rust as well. So uh, only time will tell really how these bikes will fare in the UK market. But yeah, it's not a bad bike. Let's, uh, let's get on board, hop on and take you for a ride and I'll tell you the things that I like and dislike about it and we'll see how she rides. Okay, so the 500 AC, how is it? I would say it's a fantastic commuter bike, like I said just now. Uh, the screen, as you can see, is really well designed and the position of the screen there's no glare actually there seems to be like a cover on the screen like an anti-glare cover which also is a good point but very precise and clear you've got your fuel gauge your temperature of your engine uh, the tachometer and speed in the middle gear indicator odometer and the brilliant tire pressure monitor on such a uh, a cheap bike now I'll try and locate the weight of this bike and put it on the screen just now. Now just ending up the dual carriageway for just a short uh, couple of mile blast. And uh, we're already in six gear at 40 miles an hour. Like I said, this is quite short geared as a bike. It kind of runs out of puff at about four and a half thousand rpm it doesn't really give much more than that in acceleration um, but yeah i was coming up the motorway at around six thousand two hundred rpm at about 70 miles per hour and it was quite happy to sit there there's no vibration at all through the bars or the foot pegs at any speeds it's quite good but i think if you were going on a long journey uh, just the high frequency of the engine would uh, wind me up a little bit But the bike is not designed for that the bike is designed as a learner bike a starter bike a commuter bike if you wanted a commuter bike to uh, commute to work and back on uh, Near a city or a big town then uh, the bike would be perfect for that It's very nice to see it coming on the Pirelli GT Angels I actually run the GT Angel 2 on my Yamaha MT10 SP as you know and I really rate those tyres I was just going for another gear then but I'm, I'm already in 6 so yeah if I had to uh, have a niggle with it a little bit it would be the gearing I think they should have made the gearing a little bit taller especially in different gears it would have been better Like I say, it runs out of puff. The red line's at about 8,500 RPM, but you'd be lucky to get there, to be honest. Handlebar position, uh, they're quite upright, really. My, my arms are pretty much straight in front of me, uh, which is quite nice. It gives you uh, plenty of chance to, uh, to steer the bike and manhandle it. Brakes on the bike, being the twin pot Nissan on the front with the 298mm discs are really really bitey plenty of feel and the rear brake also is uh, pretty good so brakes big plus point nothing wrong with the brakes at all just the tall gearing at the moment uh, zero vibrations through the bars from this parallel twin which is nice now I would like to have seen a little bit more power produced from this engine I'll just put the uh, the figures on the screen just now of this bike for torque and also horsepower compared to the Honda and you can see the uh, the differences suspension though um, I'm 
95 kilo, six foot two, and the uh, suspension's handling and soaking up all the bumps, even with it being non-adjustable. Uh, I would say it's not on the soft side at all, it's more on the firm side, which is great. Uh, the seat on the bike, uh, same I found with the, the Adventure DSX, actually. The seat, for me, as a commuter, it would be alright, but if you were going to go, you know, distances on this thing, then it's one of those seats that feels really comfy, initially, and quite spongy. But I think over time it would be quite uncomfortable, as I found with the, the DSX recently, and uh, I'll tell you about that in the uh, the last ride and final thoughts on that bike now we're only going to do one video and this is it on the ac and the reason for that is i can pretty much get everything that i need and tell you what i think of this bike all in one video uh, we've had both of the bikes actually since the start of the month so we've managed to get out and ride them plenty to give you our final verdict on these bikes but like i said it would fit an A2 license person and also the price they're not that expensive like I say a few of the fasteners and bolts and things I am concerned about with this being a new bike and there being a, a tiny bit of rust on on a couple of things you would certainly need to uh, look after the machine give them a coat of ACF 50 with them being in the, uh, the UK climate Obviously these bikes were first made for a, uh, a warmer, drier climate than here. So material wise, of course it's been made differently. Um, but that's, that's why we're here, isn't it? To give our feedback to them so they can improve things. Again, I'm going for another gear, but I'm already in six gear. So on this 500cc engine, I do think it's a little bit underpowered, it's not all about the short gearing and I think if they could uh, improve the engine or even bring a, a 650 to the market, a twin now I know they've just launched the 650 version of the adventure bike that they have but they've actually brought a single cylinder engine to the market on that bike which I think is wrong, I think they should have kept with the uh, the twin and it would be nice to see a, uh, a 650 twin in the adventure bike and also in the naked bike so uh, let's see what they come with in the future but I think it just needs a little bit more juice, a little bit more power but you've got to think where this bike will be sold and I think it's the A2 category so I think it would make a great learner bike and also if you wanted a bike for a commuter, a cheap commuter However, I know commuting bikes are normally uh, out in all weathers, especially the UK winters with the salt on the roads. So again, I do question the fasteners and fitments on this bike to whether they could handle that in winter. Now, I did take these bikes out, not with a camera, obviously at night, and uh, check their headlights. And the lights on the front, the all LED headlights, are very good at night as I would expect from an LED headlight so that's all good the throttle connection is very very smooth through town it's just uh, an absolute dream compared to some of the bigger engined bikes on the market mirrors look a little bit big on this bike but they do their job the clutch as you'd expect from a small capacity engine is super light and also you've got adjustable clutch lever and also brake lever which is a, uh, a good thing and I mentioned that on the adventure bike as well it's good to see the cheaper market bikes coming with adjustable clutch lever which you don't get on some of the more pricier expensive bikes on the market well it's certainly a capable bike the suspension is great the tires are great the brakes are great the engine could do with a little more power but that's coming from a person and it is only my personal opinion by the way this is uh, not everybody's general opinion what one man thinks and what another man thinks is uh, very different sometimes but uh, it could be that I'm coming from a, a large CC capacity engine bike and I very rarely get to ride the smaller capacity bikes so uh, it might be enough 
I've not ridden the Honda by the way so uh, to compare it against that I can only go off um, you know what's on paper and spec uh, I'd love to ride the Honda to, to see how it compares so Honda if you're listening uh, reach out to me email in the description below one thing's for sure you'll not get done speeding on this thing <laughs> but yeah I mean I'm in six gear now doing 26 mile an hour through this little village and the bike's not complaining at all just need to miss the potholes thank you yeah I think filtering through a, a city in traffic with this bike would be uh, very easy now one thing I was looking for on the dash and I couldn't see it and it's right in front of me 18 degrees so uh, bank holiday has uh, come back with some warm weather and it's about four o'clock in the afternoon so perfect weather for an Easter bank holiday really does handle well just falls into corners you don't really have to think about it, it just uh, just moves it's great love it little commuter bike no problems with this one if you're thinking of buying one head on down to your local Vogue dealer have a look at their websites for dealership networks in the UK it's growing very fast by the way the exhaust on this is muffling that parallel twin sound a little bit because the uh, the DSX the adventure bike sounds nicer than this and it's the same engine so an aftermarket can would be nice but it's not too bad so that about covers the Vosges 500 AC the naked commuter bike and if you'd like to know more I'll pop a link in the description below to the Vosges website where you can uh, check out the details on this bike but uh, yeah if you're not subscribed to the channel then uh, hit that subscribe button ding that bell for future videos coming up and I'll catch you on another review or a bike ride soon, guys. Take care. Cheers.